Hey there, fellow guitar people. Today I want to talk about something that's really important, maybe not the most exciting thing, but it really pays off in the long run. That's taking good care of your baby, your guitar. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Thomas Michel from Real Guitar Success. Now, maintaining a guitar may not be the most exciting subject in the world, but it's one of those things that really pays off in the long run. And the good thing is, once you develop some basic habits, it really isn't hard. And as a matter of fact, I think it takes very little energy. In this video, I'm going to talk about the three main areas that you're going to get the most bang for your buck out of. Keep your guitar clean. The first thing I think of is every time I play my guitar, I wipe the strings down when I'm done. When you play the guitar, there's oil on your hands that gets on the strings. Now, there's acid in this oil. Some people have more and less depending on your body chemistry, but in generally, that acid tends to eat at the strings and corrode them and generally degrade them. Now, your strings will degrade over time anyway, just from the elements. But this speeds up the process, this acid and the oil in your fingers. So wipe down the strings after you play. And for many people, it's a good idea to wash your hands before you play the guitar. And that tends to make a bigger difference if you have a more acidic body composition. Now the next thing is to wipe down your whole guitar, and generally we call that polishing your guitar. Though for me, a lot of it is just cleaning. I don't, I don't really think of it as trying to make it shiny as much as just keep it clean. Some people use, I've heard people use kind of a spray with just water to wipe it down, maybe for simple little smudges or something that would work. I've heard some people successfully use furniture polish. Uh, I've never done that. I think it has to do with maybe the particular furniture polish. Some would be safer for a guitar than others. And also it has to do with how old your guitar is. Older guitars have a finish that's more susceptible to damage from those kinds of things than others. I just go for the easy and safe and use the commercially available guitar polish. There are many good ones on the market and the best one is the one that you have there with you and you can use right away as opposed to researching and thinking about it. That made sense, didn't it? Okay, you, you get the idea. Now, you want to clean the fretboard too, but it's a little difficult with the strings on the guitar. I mean, I can get underneath the strings and clean the fretboard, but, you know, I'm using stuff that might deteriorate the strings as well, at least quicker than they would normally deteriorate. So what I personally like to do is wait until I change the string and then thoroughly clean the fretboard. I use a special composition. It's an oil that's designed for fretboards. Some people swear by lemon oil. Some people swear by different brands. I find again that actually cleaning the fretboard with a commercially available oil is better hands down than thinking about what's the best oil. And of course, you probably knew this, use a lint-free cloth. I always go with one that either came with a guitar clean kit. You can get these little kits that have the polish, the fret oil, lint-free cloth. Or, you know, you can just buy a few on Amazon and have them handy. Keep fresh, good sounding strings on your guitar. Now that might seem kind of obvious, but the truth of the matter is, I think most people I know leave the strings on longer than is optimal. The best thing you can do about that is learn to change the strings on your guitar and learn to do it fairly easily and efficiently so that it doesn't turn into a big chore and you dread it and procrastinate forever. There are plenty of great YouTube videos that show you step by step how to change the strings on your guitar. I'll put a link to my blog post that'll help with that. So when should you change the strings? Every day? <laughs> no. But on the other hand, not every year. Uh, I usually think a rough guideline, maybe between three and six months for me. It does depend, of course, on how much you play, how much acid you have in the oil in your fingers, and whether or not you wipe that off. But you can count in generally on three to six months needing to change the strings to get that nice, clear, crisp sound back. So why change the strings? So I know I've played my guitar after nine, ten months, and to me it sounds okay. Why should you change the strings? Well, over time, the strings are degrading, even if you just left it in the case. And of course, the more you play it, the faster that happens also. Even after two to three weeks of putting new strings on, you'll start to see that discoloration and slight corrosion happening. Now, if you leave them on long enough, you'll start seeing where the strings start cutting into where you're pressing down on the frets as well. And that's when the sound is actually getting pretty bad. But even before that, there's a lot of loss in the brilliance and the clarity of the sound that you don't quite realize until you put new strings on and hear what it could sound like. So it's probably in generally better idea to put them on 
earlier than you think as opposed to later. One tip if you bust a string, instead of just replacing that one string, consider whether you should replace them all. Because when you bust a string, all the other strings, even though they might sound fine to you, they're going to sound much different than that new string you just put on. And usually, you know, if they've been on there a couple weeks, again, you'll start hearing the difference. And finally, it's a good idea to really pay attention to where your guitar is when you're not using it. I, I could say storing your guitar, but I don't want to imply that you're putting it away and not getting into it for weeks or months. I'm talking just about on a day-to-day -day basis first. Now, the optimal protection for your guitar is to keep it in the case. Maybe stick it under your bed away from prying fingers, if you, especially if you have kids in the house. And throw either a dehumidifier or a humidifier in the case, depending on the environment that you live in. But unfortunately, that's fairly counterproductive to practicing and getting better at the guitar. I know for me, if I have to do even a little extra work to get my guitar out, it'll discourage me from doing a quick practice session. Because of that, I recommend having your guitar on a stand, ready to play. Unless you're going to be gone for a while or some reason you want to put it away for a week or more. Now, I mentioned humidity. This is one of the things that damages the guitar, as well as big fluctuations in temperature, especially fast ones. For that reason, it's a good idea to put your guitar in a room that's not going to have great fluctuations in either temperature or humidity. Of course, this is something that depends how much your guitar is worth. You know, a cheap and expensive guitar might not worth too much extra effort there. And then a handmade expensive guitar is not only going to be a bigger loss if it gets damaged, but they tend to be more fragile, unfortunately. For most people, I recommend they get a hygrometer. That's a big word, isn't it? Hygrometer is a simple little device, actually, and they're pretty inexpensive nowadays. I've bought several on Amazon. They just tell you how much humidity is in the air and the temperature. And the good ones even kind of tell you the range that's happened over a period of time, so you can see if the temperature dropped down really low overnight. Now, just a few don'ts about storing your guitar. Don't leave it somewhere where it's going to get hit by direct sunlight for any period of time. Don't leave it anywhere that's going to have big fluctuations in temperature or extremes, like the trunk of your car. Don't leave your guitar up against a wall supported just by the neck. This is just asking for disaster. First of all, of course, it's almost Murphy's Law that somebody sooner or later is going to accidentally knock it over. But at the same time, it is putting an extra pressure on that neck that's unnecessary. And it is possible over time that it'll start separating the neck from the body of the guitar. And try to avoid keeping your guitar next to a drafty window or a refrigerator door or a fireplace or a radiator or somewhere again where there's going to be extreme temperature fluctuations as well as possibly humidity fluctuations. Now, if you take my advice and go out and buy one of these $15 hygrometers from Amazon, what you're after is a humidity range somewhere between 40 and 60. That's generally considered a safe range. I found I can go above that for a short period of time, but if it's consistently above that, it's time to get what we call a dehumidifier. This is something you put in the case that kind of sucks the water out of the air. And you can get ones that actually dehumidify an entire room. And the same in reverse. If you live in a very dry environment, you can get a humidifier. And not only will that be a good thing for your guitar if you keep it from getting too much water in the air, but it also helps with generally breathing and good health. And finally, try to keep your guitar from getting soaked or wet is what I'm talking about. And if it does get wet, just dry it off as quickly as possible. Okay, that's all I have for you right now. Hey, if you'd like to learn more about taking care of your guitar, Ami and I did a whole live question and answer session on varying aspects of maintaining your guitar. We call it the care and feeding of your acoustic. And the neat thing is, if you go to my blog, you'll find there's timestamps for each of the questions. So you can go right to the questions that are of most interest to you. Thanks again for joining me. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up. And leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what you're thinking or if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see me make. Take care. I'll see you again soon, hopefully.